Hello, I am Dr. Octoconopus, the planet creator on the Space Engineers Workshop. Today, I will be starting a basic tutorial guide for making custom planets. This is primarily designed for beginners and people who just want to get into that in general. So, we are going to start out by getting some programs, which will essentially be our tools for doing this. So, first things first, we're going to need a basic code editor. Now, we could technically use Windows's regular notepad, but we're going to want some more detail than that, so we are going to get notepad++. It is completely free, it's what I use for my stuff, you just click download, and you can just get an installer here, or a zip package if that's your preference. Next thing we are going to need is a image editor. I personally use Photoshop for all this, but a free photo editor, which will work just fine, and I have used in the past, is GIMP and I'll have links to both Notepad++ and GIMP in the description. Now, also in the description I will have a little starting package which will contain some basic height maps just to start out with. You'll still need to uh, work on some stuff because these will only act as a base one which you can get started off of because you will need six total. And then a essential basic layout for a planet data file. So now we are just going to close that, get out of this really quick. We are going to want to navigate to where our mods folder is for Space Engineers, which is in the app data. So if you do percent app data percent, you would wind up in the app data roaming folder, which is here, and then you just got to go to Space Engineers and then mods. So in here, you'll see .spm files. These are workshop mods that you've downloaded from the workshop. And any folder that you put in here is essentially considered a local mod. So we are going to want to create a new folder. And we'll call this one Tutorial Planet. So now if we go into here, what we are going to need is we are going to need a data folder and I'm just going to be copying the template from my little package and putting it in here. We're also going to need other things. And I doubt it will affect anything, at least for this, but it's a good idea to go into your view settings, go to options, and then uncheck hide extensions for known file types, because it has been known to hide certain things before, but shouldn't really need, shouldn't really need in this case, but it might affect things, so make sure it's off. Alright, so now that we have this, we are going to need to get some other basic files. So I'm going to open up another Explorer window. I'm going to go into where my game is. For you, if you did not specify a specific install location, it would be in Program Files x86 on your C drive, uh, Steam, uh, Steam Apps, Common, and then Space Engineers, but for me I have it on a storage drive. So we go to Space Engineers, Content, and then you won't have any of these files done here because these are scenario files I custom made. Uh, we're going to want to go into Data. We are first going to want to scroll down. We're going to want to find Planet Generator Definitions. This file right here. This is the file that contains all the data for all the planets in Space Engineers by default. So we click that, it'll open up. We'll minimize this for now. Then we're going to want to go into, well, actually first, we're going to want to go back to our mod folder. And we'll call it this planet data files. I think that's how it is in here. Yep. And then we are just going to copy just the vanilla Earth-like. Because I kind of have the ore mapping set to that. And then we don't need this anymore. And now we are going to Earth-like is the default name for the Earth planet. Uh, for this purpose, we are going to want our planet to be called Tutorial. Or that's what I'm just going to call this planet, so it's going to be called Tutorial. And as we won't be using the vanilla height maps, I'm just going to delete them. And for our basic purposes, we are not going to need the add maps either, so I'm just going to delete them too. So all we have left is the mat files. The map files would allow us to have 
ore spawn, and uh, trees and ore rocks also spawn on the planet's surface, which is why we would need these. And even without them, I think you would still be able to program in rocks and trees and whatnot, but you would definitely not have any more ore or any ores whatsoever. So now that we have all this set up, we'll open up the plant tutorial. So we have two tabs here. The vanilla file we will not be modifying, and you don't want to modify. If you accidentally modify it and don't remember what it was before, you can just verify your game cache and it will fix it. We primarily are just going to have this up as a reference file for just getting miscellaneous data off of. But our actual plant that we will be creating will be in here. Alright, so basic things first. You'll see right away uh, ID. Uh, the type ID plant generator definition which means it's a planet subtype ID which will also be the name that the planet will show up as in game so tutorial which is important because we need to have in our data file where our height maps are we have to have it the same name as the planet so it knows where to go to so this folder when we originally copied it was called earth like and if we look the vanilla earth plant, which is the first one on here, is called Earth Lake. Now, this you're not going to want to mess with unless you are going into more advanced things, which we will probably not be covering in these tutorials. And if we do cover it, it will be in a later tutorial. And now we have surface detail, which will uh, essentially show bumpiness and cracks into slopes and whatnot. We will be going into this in game a little later. Then we have all the ore data. This is the uh, ore configuration for Vanilla Earth, which ties into the map files. Then we have sound rules, which is the ambient audio, which you will hear on the planet, and some of its and its settings. So I'll look, show you the settings really quick right here, right now. So first off, we have height. Zero is the lowest it will go, which is essentially the lowest the height map can go anyway. That will be a zero to start with, and I have it set to a max of 1.2, default is one. But occasionally if I have maps that height maps are go all the way up, I'll crank it up a little higher. And I just normally leave it that higher just so I don't have to go back and do that with, for those specific planets. Latitude, which is essentially where it is on the planet so this is what you would use for transitional audio like going from a grasslands or a mountainous well not mountainous but let's just say like a grasslands to you're transitioning to a pole area so you might have a few different settings and a few different audio files for that entire transition sun angle from zenith this uh, is essentially day and night so 0 through 90 is day so if I have this 0 through 90, the audio file will only play during the daytime. Now if it's 0 through 180, it will play regardless, day or night. And then if I put 90 through 180, that will be just night. Alright, and then the environment sound is, uh, well, the sound you want to be played for those settings. So if we look in here and we scroll down, we have multiple sound rules. Here's the uh, ice line, which is the pole trans or is the transition to the pole for Vanilla Earth, and you can see it starts at uh, a latitude of 55 and ends at 80, and then at 80 to 90 we have pole day, and these only go up to 0.82, or 0.42 rather, because uh, after 0.42 you get the ambient high, which again goes night and day all the way around the planet, which is what we currently have it set to, only a it starts from the bottom and up, so that's the only audio we will hear on the planet. Well, at least for now. And then, uh, actually I'm going to remove that, we have the rules, which will define the Vox materials and how everything is laid out on the planet. So right now, looking at this, we have two voxels. One is soil, that is from anything perfectly smooth up to a slope of 20. And then we have a rule for stone, which picks up from where the soil leaves off and goes to 90. Now, if you were to make this 
so that soil goes from 0 to 20, but stone picks up at 30 and goes to 90. There would be a difference between 20 and 30. That would be film in by a default Vox material. That is specified here. Default surface material. Anything that is not specified up above or any conflicting things with your map, uh, it will be filled in with whatever material you put in here with the default max depth of whatever you put here. So right now it would be 4. And by default, underneath the soil, once you go, it only has a depth of 3, so once you get to a depth of about f 4, so once you surpass the 3, and there's no other layers underneath that, you'll see default subsurface material. Material equals stone. So once you dig underneath this uh, layer of soil, you'll hit stone. And also, if you dig through that layer of stone, you'll hit stone, which is means that this depth marker for this doesn't really matter. Now, if we scroll down from that, you'll see environment items. This will specify a voxel material and what spawns on that voxel material and where it would spawn. So if you just do a quick look, you see this is the vox material it's referencing. So material, and that would equal soil. And if you look down here, you see rule. This is essentially the same as this. So let's just say you had two things of soil, but you wanted one to, one to be slightly different. And you want that slightly different one to be uh, like around the equator of the planet. So you would then put in like a 0 to 15. And then you would make another rule that would be essentially 15 to 90. Essentially just copy pasting the same rule and then changing your settings. For this instance, we'll just have it be universal all the way around the planet. Saving. And right now, uh, the only items that are defined in here is for ore rocks, the stones that you would find ore on. And right now I have it configured for Earth Desert Area rocks, so the tan deserty rocks that you would find in the desert regions, obviously. Now, if you want to add in like trees or whatnot, we'll go into the vanilla file. Scroll down because that plan is complicated. We have trees and uh, rock, grass, forest, medium, blah 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 blah, and then we have bushes also listed in here. So you'd be able to copy and paste there and then change the settings. So let's say we wanted some trees and whatnot. We put these in here, and I'm just going to shore that up. And let's say we didn't want a density of 0.6. Let's say we wanted a density of 0.2. You would change that, save it, and then load your world. But for right now, we are not going to be messing with that. Right now, down below, we have other settings. And I'm just going to separate this out so it makes more sense. Has atmosphere true? This means that there will be an atmosphere on the planet and whatnot, which will allow you to modify all of these settings. So if we were to change this to false, there, there would be no atmosphere, so there would be no point for having these settings. Thereby, if you did have these settings in here, they would be completely ignored. So it would be the equivalent of just deleting them. Right for, but for now, I'm going to have them in here. We are going to use an atmosphere. And you'll see here right away, atmosphere, this is for uh, the gaseous densities and whatnot. So breathable, true. We can also set that to false. If we set it to false, oxygen density will be canceled out. It won't matter anymore. Maximum os oxygen you can just leave at default. It won't really matter too much. But uh, right now we'll have it at true. And then the density of the oxygen, 0.9, should be 100% or close to it. The density will be how dense the atmosphere is, which will also control how well atmospheric thrusters work. Limit altitude, uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't really know what it does, and I don't really see it in the guide being mentioned at all, other than don't change this, so just leave it as it is. Atmosphere settings, this is where you would change uh, how much fog there is, how bright the atmosphere is, uh, what your sea level is set to, which, and the color of the sun, being viewed from the planet, and uh, the color of the atmosphere. Also, the size of the sun on the planet, and all those other settings. 
which we will get into in a later video along with the majority of this other part. The next thing you'll see down below is surface gravity. We have it set to 1, so it would be 1g, but we could set it to anything really, so we could set it to 0.9, which is Mars gravity. Now you might be thinking we could have a planet with negative gravity, so negative 3. You cannot because it will just ignore the negative marker, and I believe it will just set the gravity to 0. But you can have it at any level of gravity. I generally put 0 in there just so I can remember just off the top of my head so I don't just see oh it's one and not realize that there's a dot there for now we'll leave this at one and then this stuff you don't have to mess with and right now this plant has no coated in animals but if we wanted to let's say we'll just grab some I went too far we'll grab some cyber hounds and we'll just copy the cyberhound data from the earth link and we can modify this data so that we can change the spawn rates and everything we'll change it and we'll put it right here right at the end so now it would have cyberhounds on it but for now I'm going to delete this and we will get more into detail on all the other stuff and in games and in game settings and in game plan creation in the next video so that is all for this video it's primarily just a what you need and a basic overall looking at the code and how to set up your mod. So we are going to close this, close this for now, and I will see you in the next video.